Greetings in the, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take a few moments and share with you some thoughts about your life journey. You know, God gives us the beginning and the end, the birth and the death, and in between, uh, we live the journey. And it's how we live the journey that reflects much about who we are, our character, where we put our trust, who influences our life. It's about life's journey. And it's the boat ride that I want to talk about. I, I remember in, in the Navy in 1981, we were sailing on my guided missile cruiser, the USS Reeves. It was a 600 foot long ship, 60 feet wide, about 400 men. We were sailing from Perth, Australia up to the Philippines. And it was the Eastern uh, Indian Ocean. And there was a four day run in there where the waves, the swells, not the waves, were 30 feet high. Now, if you can imagine a ship for four days going through swells 30 feet high, the ship was just going up and down and up and down. It was, we couldn't put anything on the wardroom tables. You had to stuff pillows around yourself in your bed at night so you wouldn't fall out. Everything was flying around that wasn't attached. In fact, I can remember even a file cabinet screwed into the aluminum bulkhead or, or wall, uh, ripped loose and fell. That was a high sea, very interesting ride, I can assure you. But we made it. We made it. And as the chaplain of the ship, I had many guys coming to me for prayer, you know, not just because of severe seasickness, but for, you know, concern and worry about a lot of things because they were heavy seas. They were high seas, big waves, all right? And there's a story in the Bible about a similar situation. If you go to uh, Mark 6, I mean, it begins in verse 45. <clears throat> it says, after Jesus had dealt with his crowds, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him uh, to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after leaving them, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. Now, verse 47, later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on the land. And Jesus saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake and he was about to pass by. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought that he was a ghost and they cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. They saw Jesus, thought he was a ghost, cried out in terror, in terror. Immediately he spoke to them. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down and they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves and, and, and so on. But what's the point of this? You know, Jesus could have ridden the boat with them, but he sent them on their journey alone without him. And it wasn't that they were on a journey alone without him, but on the journey, they, they encountered the seas that were welling up against them, and it terrified them. Now, look, I think life's journey is much like this. God sends us on our way. Uh, to serve him, to bring glory and honor and praise to him. And we're going to constantly run into those, those situations that are going to become threatening because life's journey is never easy, is it? There's always going to be the ups and downs, the illnesses, the, the job loss, the pandemics, the riots and the crowds, you know, elections. There's always going to be the stuff going on. And look, it terrifies. It terrifies us, you know, to, to encounter the stuff. But what's the point of this story? The point of this story is Jesus never takes his eye off the ball. And you're the ball. I'm the ball. He never takes his eye off of us. And as we're going through life's journeys, as we're encountering all these different things that are causing angst in our life, he wants us to understand that he's always going to be with us. He's never going to take his eye off of us. And he has the capacity and the power to deal with any situation that we are encountering on a personal level. And he can always step in, in that moment, to give us the relief and the comfort that, that we need. He, he knows how we're wired because he wired us. He also knows our needs, but sometimes he wants us to be stretched. He wants us to 
uh, not always walk in that hand-in-hand -hand moment, but to take the oars in our hands and begin to pull against the waves of life, to pull forward, to use the strength and the God-given talents that he's placed in each of us, in our, in our intellect, in, the, in our bodies, so we, can, so we can overcome. Now, he's always going to be with us. And there's going to be those moments when we're going to say, look, Lord, I, I think I'm done. And he's going to step in and he's going to give us the relief of his presence and his power. But in the meantime, look, it's about the journey. It's not about the end of life when we're going to go to heaven and being in, in his perfect presence forever and ever. It's between now and that moment and how we live our life, how we reflect our life, how we rely on him, how we trust in God. These are all important things that God wants to bring forth in each of us. And look, if we're in an you know, easy ride on a, on a smooth road, there's no challenge. But when we hit life storms, and we know what those storms are like, because we've all been there, and we know that just because we've been through one or two or three or four, there aren't more yet to come, but we learn through each experience how to deal, how to cope, how to rely, where to put our trust and faith in the living God, in Jesus Christ, our brother. And by the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we are enabled, right, to do all that he's called us to do. Look, I hope this has been helpful. You know, life is a journey, and it's going to have the ups and downs. But with our God, all things are possible. Our God will make a way. That's his assurance to us, not only uh, in his word, but to each other. You know, my words to your ears is, are, are to be encouraged and to know that whatever storm you're going through, your God, our God, my God is in the midst of it, never takes his eye off of us and will sustain us by his grace. His grace is always sufficient. We know that. That's what the word says. Amen? So listen, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you want to reach out to me, hit the comment button on Facebook or go to my website, paulteskyministries.com. Send me a prayer request. Share your thoughts with me. I'll get back to you. But I want you to know this one thing. God is with you and he loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his son, his son, to die on the cross for your life that you may have the blessed assurance of life with him forever in eternity. Amen? So may God bless you and keep you. May God sustain you and provide you with all that you need to meet every day's challenge as it comes. Amen? And all God's people said, Amen.